people were telling me that Elden Ring was this really hard game, but psh, come on, I'm a gaming god. This game's gonna be a piece of cake. It's pretty straightforward. You just go in, you slice and dice, kill a bunch of enemies, then you go by a grace site to rest, and then you do it all over again. This game is gonna be a brief. Elden Ring is the newest game made by From Software, the company behind all the Souls and the Souls-like games. Games that I normally avoid because I'm really impatient and constantly dying to the same boss over and over again is painful and makes me want to cry in a corner. But after seeing the trailers and the fact that the story is written by none other than George R.R. Martin, yeah, that guy, I had to give it a try. And as expected, it's hard! So what is this game even about? Honestly, it's kind of vague, but I'll try my best to sort of summarize the plot. The game takes place in the lands between. This place is ruled by the offspring of Queen Marina the Eternal, who all have a piece of the Elden Ring that gives them power. You play as a Tarnished, which means you were exiled after the Shattering, which is when the ring got all shattered and stuff. So you return from your exile and you're back to gather all the pieces of the Elden Ring and try and become the next Elden Lord, which is what happens when you get the ring, I guess. And depending on how much you complete when you finish the game, there's up to six different endings. But I will not see any ending for a while because this game is stupid but hard, and it took me 100 tries just to beat the first boss, okay? It's really hard. When you start the game, you can customize yourself however you want and choose which class you want to be, which will determine which type of weapons and combat style you prefer. And it will also determine your initial armor set, but you can change that whenever you want to whatever you want. Just know that if your clothes weigh too much, you'll go slower. Just a simple tip. If you jump down this hole in the beginning, you'll get a full-on tutorial, so all you noobs out there, don't just walk past the hole, okay? And after you're done with all that, your journey begins. It's this vast open world where you can literally go any direction you want and fight anything you want. Just don't fight the Tree Sentinel! You're not ready yet! He will destroy you! You'll meet Marina, who will act as your maiden since you are a sad, lonely, maidenless dude. And she'll make sure you know it. But you, I am afraid, are maidenless. But she also gives you a steed named Torrent, so she's cool, I guess. And every time you defeat an enemy, you'll get runes, which act as your in-game currency and also the experience you'll need to level up. You can increase your attributes to be stronger, smarter, or vigor -er. However, when you die, not if, because you'll 100% die, you will lose all your runes. So don't be walking around with thousands of runes that could have been used. Luckily, you can go back to where you died to get your runes again, but if you die before you get them back, they're gone forever. It's as unforgiving as any classic souls type game. You can also use the runes to buy things and upgrade weaponry. Runes rule everything around me. Ream. I feel like a lot of my fans won't get that reference and I'm cool with that. Some of you may be wondering, what makes a Dark Souls type game so hard? <laughs> Everything! Enemies will just kill you instantly. Some enemies will sneak up behind you, not even giving you a chance to react. There's a million ways to die in this game and you will die to literally everything. Rats. Birds. Bears. Was that a ball? A dragon. Whatever the hell this is, it just farts in your face, what? Everything wants to kill you, and if you're not too careful, you will die. So you need to practice fighting and get used to dodging a ton. But also, get used to dying. That's part of the game. You learn from your mistakes, and hopefully the next time you fight a boss, you'll win. Okay, maybe the next time. Or the next time? <laughs> when will I... <laughs> oh, there we go. The game is a full-on open world with a bunch of different enemies to fight and locations to discover. You'll touch grass. I mean, you'll touch a grace, which will act as a fast travel beacon and a safe place for you to upgrade yourself. And you'll find so many of these graces throughout the map, which will make getting around a lot more efficient. Since it's an open world, there's a bunch of hidden items throughout and bosses lurking on every corner of the map. There's so much to do. It's incredible. I've said bosses a bunch, so let me explain what this means for these types of games. Bosses are essentially just very strong enemies with a unique design and their own cool name. They usually reward you with something cool after defeating them, and if they're part of the main story, they have a whole cutscene and an actual voice actor. It's great. Lend me thy strength, O oh kindred. 
They are very hard, but luckily the games give you some help with the ability to summon spirits during these fights, or even an NPC that will take a lot of the damage for you. It's so much easier with these dudes. I'll never forget your sacrifice. But that's Elden Ring in a big nutshell. You go exploring the world, fighting bosses, and dying a bunch. So you may be thinking, Macro, how'd you get so far into this game so quickly? I didn't. I'm still stuck on like the third story boss. This footage here is my best friend Dom's gameplay. Oh, you thought I got this far already? Psh Heck no, but I want to get better and I want to keep playing because the game really is fun. And to better explain what I mean, let's talk about the... The world is gorgeous, just absolutely stunning. There's so many different environments and I haven't even discovered half the map. The combat is great. It can be a bit clunky when you're on horseback, but overall it's a wonderfully straightforward combat system with a ton of depth. You could be someone that's better with swords or with shields or with magic or with your fists. There's so many ways you can play this game and that will make everyone's experience different. And it also gives it a ton of replayability. Let's talk about the horse for a second. The steed, Torrent makes traveling the open world incredible. You can double jump with this horse, making all other video game steeds seem pretty lame in comparison. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Yoshi. Get out of here. Also, there's a fun fan theory that the horse is named Torrent. So when you look up Elden Ring Torrent, if you're trying to illegally download the game, it will pop up with a bunch of pictures of this horse. I think that's hilarious. The story is very interesting, but you can go the whole game skipping every cutscene and you'll still have a great time, but you won't want to skip the cutscenes. They're so unique and they don't happen that often. Often. The character and boss designs are great. These are the type of creatures that you hear about in your nightmares and it's awesome. The game is hard, but there are a ton of options and various ways to approach a difficult boss. Eventually, if you keep grinding and leveling up, you overcome the obstacles, which I know for some people may not be fun, but this game does make grinding feel very rewarding. On PC specifically, which is what I play on, this game is just not optimized that well, with crashes and bugs galore. Not as bad as Cyberpunk, but it's not perfect. Thankfully, the From Software developers quickly added a ton of patches and fixed a lot of the issues immediately, but some still do persist and hopefully they will be fixed soon. So there is a multiplayer mode where you can summon your buddies. We're brothers. Happy and we're samurai lovers. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> You can fight bosses together and die together, you know, best friend stuff. But it's a bit convoluted to get your friends to play with you. Honestly, I kind of wish it was just a simple button in the menu and not a full on literal ritual every time. I'm being serious, you literally have to do a ritual. It's not that hard to do, but it's not intuitive and the entire process is just very tedious. Like seriously, it didn't have to be this big of a waste of time. Also, the ability to write words everywhere is mostly annoying. They just get in the way and sometimes they can be helpful tips but most of the times it will be something like this. Overall, Elden Ring is an incredible experience. Fans of these Souls-like games will be satisfied, but I think that this game will entice a lot of newcomers as well. It's not easy by any means, but there's so much depth to this game which can drastically change how you approach it and how hard it actually will be. I definitely want to complete the main story, even if it takes 10,000 more deaths. And that's honestly something I didn't think would happen when I first started this game. It's that much fun. So I'm going to be giving Elden Ring a 9.5 out of 10. It's aesthetic, the gameplay, the story, everything about it is phenomenal. Phenomenal. The only reason it's not a 10 is the PC issues and the tedious multiplayer aspect, which aren't that big of a deal, but you know, it's not perfect. But what do you think? Have you played it? If so, how far did you get before you quit? <laughs> But seriously, what would you rate it? Let me know in the comments down below. Okay guys, I gotta keep grinding so I can defeat that dragon that killed me earlier, so uh, I'll catch you later. Ya noob!